Hello and welcome to Guider's Gun Guide. I'm Ben Guider, your host. Today I'm going to be looking at some uh, additions to my Umarex Gauntlet. Uh, since the last uh, time we talked about this gun, uh, I've had a couple of things arrive. You'll notice on my uh, behind me, I'm no, I no longer have that Winchester 2 to 7 by 32 adjustable objective scope. Great scope. It works. You know, what more can you ask for for 40 bucks, right? So behind me, I've got a, uh, this is a UTG um, 3 to 12 by 40 or 44 side wheel adjustable. Um, <clears throat> here on the side, I've got the uh, side wheel adjustment, uh, UTG side wheel, bigger guy. And to get the... If y'all remember, the reason I didn't have this mounted uh, to my gauntlet in the first place was the gauntlet has dove, uh, 11 millimeter dovetail uh, scope rails, and the rings that came with this UTG are Weaver Picatinny's. So, um, how to get it mounted? So that's the first thing I want to show you. Uh, once I realized I had that issue and I was playing with my the, the Winchester scope. Um, I went looking and I thought the answer was going to be, I'm going to buy new rings, uh, which, you know, a good, nice set of rings can be a little bit pricey, right? So what I did is, and what I tripped across was this, the, boy, that is reflecting and bright, isn't it? There you go. That'll be, yeah, there we go. That's a little better. So this is uh, the UTG uh, DTP, Dovetail to Picatinny Rail Adapter, patent pending, okay? And really simple instructions, really <laughs> easy to use. Um, the, uh, I, unfortunately, they're, they're on here, so you're not going to see them, but they're spring-loaded, and... On their bottom side, it's got the, uh, the grooves and everything to fit a dovetail. But on top, it has uh, one, one, little, one little notch. Uh, that's, uh, that's my youngest getting home from school. Hey, bud. Um, it's got one little uh, a weaver or Picatinny notch here. And you simply put that under your scope ring. Go ahead and put it in there really easy you just you squeeze it sets in there spring loads come back out um, and now as you tighten your scope rings uh, it squeezes against that that dovetail squeezes the dovetail onto the rail and there you go it mounts and I'm gonna tell you I'm actually really happy with how secure it is um, I don't know that I would want to use this solution on a uh, springer uh, a brake barrel, under level lever, side lever, right, uh, spring piston or uh, gas piston, uh, air rifle. As, as everyone's aware, the, those air rifles uh, create a lot of shock uh, on, the, on the scopes, right? And you've heard people, you know, maybe people have talked to or mentioned the double recoil, right? So you've got the, you know, you pull, the, you pull your trigger and that piston launches forward, smacks into the end, of the compression chamber, which is just metal to metal smack, right? And that causes the, the, the uh, gun to lurch forward, it causes a lot of shock and vibration that translates, you know, through the gun and, and up to the scope and it jerks on it, right? Um, most, uh, most, you know, scopes that are designed for handling recoil, right? Like your, your firearm uh, heavy recoiling scope, uh, scopes for heavy recoiling rifles. They're designed to uh, uh, deal with recoil going backwards, right? There isn't a forward recoil. So um, there's, there's different forces at play when it comes to air rifles. Now, you know, people have always, you know, uh, people have laughed about, oh, the, you, what do you mean your air rifle recoil, man? I, I shoot government 44, 70s and all these big, uh, you know, big guns and things. And, right, you, you know the type of person. 
And, uh, you know, it, trying to explain physics to somebody like that, I think, is a challenge. So we don't try, right? Um, at least I don't. So, you know, there is a recoil, right? A recoil is simply a force that's occurring opposite of the direction of, of, of the acting force, right? It's, it's physics 101, uh, uh, well, which one is it? The law of, uh, of motion, or, or, or I forget which one it is, right? Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, right? So even on a, even on a pump, pump, pumper, right? A multi, multi-pump 10 shot, you know, like a, a Crossman 1322, there is, if you pay attention, there is a light amount of recoil that does occur. Now, is it going to bruise your shoulder and hurt you? And da, da, da. No. Okay. Is it, a, is it like a shooting a 7mm mag? No. Okay. But there is a recoil. All right. So as the, as the force is pushing against that pellet, starting it forward, there's a opposite force that's going back towards you. And you'll feel that if you pay attention. It's there. Okay. It's slight, but it is. Well, on your spring piston air rifles, there is that that's occurring, right? You have that slight back recoil from the air pressurizing against the pellet and the, and the pellet trying to go forward, but there, you know, there's, there's this backwards as well. And then there's the smacking of the spring. Uh, there's, uh, there's some data out there that, that shows that there's a hit forward and then a recoil back even. Um, so there's a lot going on there. Big segue to come back to <laughs> to come back to my uh, my scope here. Okay, so the what I noticed with these dovetail mount rings, so they do have they do come with uh, they come with the the screws right to to go into the the scope stop studs or, or whatever you you want to call it. Um. And so, from that perspective, those uh, those um, those dovetail rings there will help. Uh, they they will have that that uh, keep your keep the the scope from sliding. Right, it's got that scope stop stud there. But there is still the um, there's still the gap that's in. You know, when you put a, a, a Weaver or Picatinny rail, uh, scope ring on a rail, there's ever so slight, right? It's there. It's a little bit. It's there. A little bit of, of wiggle. There's a little play there, okay? And so, you know, there's there's guidance out there for, you know, you want to maybe, the, the front ring, you want to push it towards that, butt it up against that front edge. And then the back ring, you want to butt it up against the back edge of, of their of their respective uh, uh, Weaver or Picatinny slots, right? And the reason for that is the aforementioned forward back double recoil that comes on those spring piston air rifles. Okay, so the and you okay, Ben? But you you told me you wouldn't use this, but it's got scope stops and you can do all this. As I look at this now. Maybe if I played with it a little more, I might be a little more comfortable with it, but it feels like I'm adding an extra an extra piece of something that's, that has the risk of slipping and sliding, right? Uh, which you are. And so, you know, this may be just, this is my own personal opinion, grain of salt, you disagree, you've got other, you know, maybe you've got personal experience with this, that's great, okay? I'm just telling you from my perspective, you know, how I would would or would not go about this. So as I'm as as you're trying to mount that, I can see where there's going to be trouble keeping it all butted up against each other and locked in in the different spots where you want it to to ensure that good, steady uh, uh, position on that scope. Now, of course, there's other scope rings and mounts out there uh, that you know they've got a they've got a built-in spring shock absorber, even really cool stuff. I, I'm hoping to put my hands on one of those at some point, just test them out. Um, but I haven't had a need to, haven't found a need to. You know, this this scope was originally purchased for uh, a Hotson Torpedo uh, 150 Vortex. Anyone that's ever shot that thing or shot uh, the, the, the Vortex 150s knows there's a lot of shock, a lot of recoil, a lot of stuff going on there. And I don't know, hundreds of, maybe 
I don't know if I hit a thousand shots with that gun yet with that scope. And I took it off, put it on this. It shoots great. Holds zero, no problems. Uh, and it was a refurb in the first place. So I think that's a testament to UTG's build quality. Um, I don't like to fanboy over products and, and manufacturers, but I'm really close to it with UTG after all the experience that I've had with these, with these scopes. Now, there's other great ones out there that people will talk about, right? There's Hawk. There's loophole, there's all kinds of guy, uh, good manufacturers out there. Okay, so I'm not telling you UTG is the one and only and, and, and you're crazy or stupid if you take something else. Okay, I'm not telling you that. Okay, there's, there's lots of great scope brands out there. And I'm sure if I put my hand, you know, maybe if I put my hands on a Hawk, uh, maybe I'd be like, you know what, the UTG was nice, but this Hawk is that much better. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, until I put my hands on stuff, I really don't like to give opinions of them, right? So once I've, I've put my hands on, I've put some experience with it, then I can say, okay, this is how I think about it, how, how I look at it. I will tell you this, though. Um, I've got two Vortex scopes, uh, one for my 1022 uh, that if you've watched my other video, you know is currently attached to my Pishtal, and one for my um, uh, uh, AR, right? So I'm going to tell you light transmission, glass quality, clarity. You know, this is a 30 millimeter tube with a 40 or 44 millimeter objective, I forget which. But the Crossfire 2 rimfire scope that is for my 1022 that's currently on my Pishtal has a one inch diameter tube and a smaller objective. I think it's a 30, I wanna say it's a 32 objective. And you say, why does that matter? Well, for scopes, I guess this is going to be a scope video. I guess that's what we're doing today. Um, for scopes, um, the, the reason you get the larger diameter and the uh, uh, tube, right? 30 millimeter is bigger than, um, is bigger than uh, uh, one inch, okay? One inch is 2.54 centimeters, which is 25.4 millimeters. I think I did that math right. So 25.4 millimeters versus 30 millimeters. Bigger number, right? Okay, so the tube's bigger. Great. And the bell here, your, your, your objective lens, is you get larger ones because that allows more light in, okay? Bigger tube, more light transmits down the tube to your eye, okay? That's, those are two factors that translates into image clarity uh, of, of, of what you see through the scope. You then also have the quality of the glass. You have whatever, you know, if it's nitrogen filled or some sort of a vacuum or whatever that's inside the tube. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of parts and materials and factors that go into how good the clarity is for your scope. So all of that to say this, the vortex clarity of a smaller diameter scope with a smaller objective is better than this UTG, I, subjectively. Uh, I've not, you know, I've not done an objective measurement of, you know, uh, lumens or photons or whatever coming through, you know, uh, uh, both of them to say this one has more light transmission than this one. I have not done that. Okay, just a subjective assessment with my eye tells me that the vortex appears to be maybe better quality glass or maybe how they do their construction, it produces a clearer image or, or whatever, I don't know. Or maybe it's a coating on the lens, you know, maybe the, you know, uh, maybe they bit a bat head off and, and you know, did a seance, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to tell you, I know for a fact that there are probably higher quality, better quality optics out there than a UTG, okay? Because I've, I've, ha I've held one, I've looked through it, I've made that assessment, right? Remember, I've put my hands on it, had that opinion. Now, that could be that specific scope, even though the one on my AR also, really great clarity, okay? So I've got two vortexes I'm comparing here against one UTG. Um, I will tell you this UTG is better clarity and, and brighter image than the Winchester. 
Um, all of these are, of course, much better than the 4 by 15s or whatever, Tasco, Crossman, Daisy, that come on the, the cheap bundled scopes that come on your cheap pumpers, right? Obviously. Obviously yeah. <laughs> no surprise, those, are, those aren't as good, right? So anyway, um, where was I going with that? I don't remember. Anyway, so that's scopes. I've done the mounting. I've had this guy out. Um, I posted some photos on some of the user groups. Um, I'll include them in this video. But uh, you can see that I'm doing, I'm shooting pretty well. I think I'm shooting well, right? 20 yards. Um, I'm, bulls I'm bullseyeing every shot that I really, you know, if, if I'm not hitting the bullseye with this right now, it's because I messed up my trigger pull or I messed up my breathing or I messed, it's me, okay? 100%. <laughs> 100%. If you see a shot and it's not exactly where it's supposed to be, I'm telling you right now, it's not that gun, it's not that scope, uh, it's not the pellets I'm using, um, because I know as soon as I pull that trigger, oh wow, I, I blinked or I, you know, I, I twitched, you know, the crosshair jumped on me, um, you know, I wasn't holding my finger pad exactly at the same spot where it's supposed to, or I jerked the trigger, or I got impatient with the trigger, or you know. I didn't follow through with the trigger, I jerked, right? I'm actually at that point with a gun now. I have a gun, finally. I finally have an air rifle that is allowing me that quality of level of feedback on my own shooting. I can't tell you how excited that makes me. Um, I love this idea because I am working to become that much better of a shooter. All right, so uh, that was scope mounts. I may break this up into another video, we'll see. Alright, so originally my video was going to be about a new product that I got. Uh, it's the Hajimoto uh, stripper and stack. Um, moderator stack, I guess, or baffle stack. But the video ended up turning into a scope video. So, I'm going to leave it at that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the shooting that I accomplished with swapping out the scope from the Winchester to the UTG. Um, I became so happy with it that I decided to uh, do a little fancy shooting and drew a G. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about doing a future clip that will probably become my intro portion. Uh, where I'm going to video actually shooting a G. Uh, if someone challenged me to do a cursive G. Uh, if the weather holds, I'm going to try to get out there and do that. So anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And uh, please uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And we will see you next time.